Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is here. Today, to do JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Star Dust Crusaders, Episode 6 Review. Of course, the link is going to be in the description box down below on Crunchyroll.com. And if you haven't seen behind me, That's right. Those are the prizes for the Patreons on Patreon.com, obviously. We have two. Dose PlayStation 4s and 10 volumes of Berserk. And, of course, another winner for the anime slash manga stuff gets to choose which 10 volumes of whatever series they want. That's just the way it is. Now, that being said, moving on, because you guys already know, if you want to be a part of this... Go down in the description box below, Patreon.com. Now, the next thing. Woo! The next thing. This episode is very simple. So this review should, keyword, should be quick by my standards. All it really is, is the fight between Jotaro and the stand user, the captain... And his stand, Dark Blue Moon. I believe so. Yeah, Dark Blue Moon. Now, also there is the introduction of this nameless girl who was a stowaway, who was initially dressed up as a boy, found out to be a girl by Jotaro after examining, quote-unquote, and then she's now tagging along with them well no they're on, they're on this ship well they're on this lifeboat together because the ship wound up blowing up that they're on and then they're on the lifeboat together and then they wind up seeing like this giant ship right next to them like it came out of nowhere so but right now she seems to be important because she's like interacting with the main bunch she's asking them questions she didn't fall in love with jotaro on the spot because all the girls that we've seen so far Fall in love with Jotaro and Kyori, um, Kyoriaki, I think his name is. Oh, crap. Whoa. Whoa. I forgot his name. Uh, you know, like the guy who is the stand, you, who is, who, who has, um, High Elephant Green, all right? Noriaki. I think his name is Noriaki. Fuck it. Whatever. Mo moving on. Here's the thing. She is one of the few, no, well, not one of the few. She is the only girl so far not to fall immediately in love with Jotaro and the other guy. In fact, even Jotaro's own mom is like all lovey-dovey with Jotaro. So it's kind of weird. It's kind of creepy. So she, right now, seems to be unique among most of the females that they meet. Now, when it comes to the stand user, the enemy, very interesting stand right there. How he could control him with the water. Actually very fast in the water. How the stand itself, the dark blue moon, could actually like control and manipulate like corals. Or I mean, I'm sorry, not corals, barnacles. And how the barnacles can be used to like sap away the strength of a stand. Very fascinating. And also how the stand user actually, he himself. You can tell that he was actually very well home with his stand. Because this guy... Actually has a very he has very good lungs, right? He can actually hold his breath three times longer than the average human for like six minutes, six minutes plus. So very impressive. And you can clearly see that his training goes hand in hand with this stand. And like he's just talking all types of smack underwater, and it was kind of weird. But we actually found out. So when I asked you guys formally about the whole communication between the stands. Now, sometimes it's like the Sands are talking to each other. We actually find out in this chapter, in this episode, actually, I should say, that a stand user can actually talk through the stand. And so we see Jotaro do so with Star Platinum. And what I also want to point out here is that, like I said before, Jotaro, when it comes to a stand control, is a rookie. In this sense, he's a genius, and his stand is well-equipped when it comes to combat because of its speed and its precision. However, Dotaro himself is still a rookie when it comes to stand... When it comes to actually finding out the potential 
of his stand. He's not at that point where he actually can master every... He's not at mastery level, right? Let me keep it fucking simple. He's not at goddamn mastery level. So, when he pulls out that shit at the end of the episode, where the fingers of Star Planum extend and actually cut off the top of the head of Dark Blue Moon, that's an ability that he may not have known that he had, but now you know he has. He concentrated all of his power into, his, into the fingers of Star Planet, and like they stretch and slice, done. So, as this journey progresses, Jotaro is probably going to find out and learn more about his stand and what his stand can do, aside from its strength, its speed, and its precision. And, I mean, that's... Well, no. There is one more thing I want to mention, right? And then I'll get to the basic stuff, the animation, the pacing, and then we'll wrap. And then we'll call it a review. There was one scene in this episode that really made me mad. That it really pissed me off. And if you guys have watched my videos for a long time, you guys know what it is. They censored. Joe Taro smoking a fucking cigarette. How do we get to that point where you have to censor a fucking ce not even one piece censor out cigarette? They fucking censored out Jotaro smoking a fucking cigarette. Ah, oh, That was disgusting. Are you kidding me? That's massively soft, bro. That's Teletubby status, bro. Where the fuck is Sleepies? Holy shit, I'm about to hop in that shit right now. Going night night. I, that's so soft. I mean, maybe there's an agenda there. Maybe there's an agenda so like they're gonna block out the cigarette to let the viewers in Japan know that this certain company that produces the actual series doesn't support cigarette and tobacco. I don't know. But the fact of the matter remains that what they're doing is that they're butchering the original work. Okay, and maybe, again, from my understanding is that if you buy the Blu-rays, the Blu-rays, they are uncensored, you can buy those. But my problem here is that <clears throat> if it's an agenda, you're, the, the agenda should not supersede the original content. Like, I fucking hate that. When these animators, when these companies completely altered what was dictating the original work. I fucking hate that. With a passion. Ah, oh. Just keep it the fucking... Just keep it the fucking same. They censored out a fucking cigarette. Oh my god. I, I cannot believe that. That is terrible. You're drinking a beer. Look, look, censor out the beer. Yeah, we don't support alcohol, so we're gonna censor the fucking beer. I mean, the blood was one thing, the gore is one thing, but the cigarette is on a whole new level of bullshit. See, it really is, and it's very disappointing. It, honestly, I, I, and then, to my recollection, that didn't happen in the previous seasons. I don't know. Like, I think in the previous seasons, you actually had people smoking cigarettes and drinking alcohol, and it was cool. But all of a sudden, now, this season, cigarettes fucking like, black out. And, like, they blacked out, like, the entire... They, like, they blacked out Jotaro's mouth, his shit, everything was blacked out from, like, here, here. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Terrible. Fucking terrible. That's a disgrace. That's atrocious. Butchering... Butchering fine work. Nah, man. That's no, nah, no. Nah. If I was the author, I'm pissed. I'm like, yo, no, nah, I ain't cool. No, no, it's not cool. All right. Moving on. <sighs> yeah. 
animation overall, it was good. And it was fast paced, but overall, the pacing was still fairly well decent. Story progression wise, we made progress into the story, but not really, because right now, they're still stuck. Like, they're trying to get this location in time, obviously. They have 50 days. But they keep on being stopped by Stan users. So when they think they have it made when it comes to the ship captain, no. Ship captain blows up the ship before he dies. Or when he dies. I don't know when. Timed explosions. I don't know. But the fact of the matter remains that this dude prevented the progress of the main party. Now there's another ship, but this ship appeared out of nowhere. And you can obviously tell that this ship is menacing, 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 menacing. So we did make sort of progression from a from an episodic standpoint, but not from a overall story standpoint. So that's very simple. And that being said overall, the fight between D Blue Moon and Jotaro Stan overall it was okay. I mean, to me, honestly, Jotaro, if you guys already know, Jotaro, I'm not a huge fan of him because as a character, he's too linear. He's just way too linear. I mean, like, you see him in the episode, right? Every time. Yare, yare. And I don't have a hat, but, you know, yare, yare. Yare, yare. Yare, yare. Yare. And just good grief all day long. Very stoic, very calm, cool, collected. And he's like a fan fave in Japan. I know that for a fact. But, geez, like, me personally. He's not as eccentric, he's not as unique as other characters that exist in the series of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And he's just the cool story. I mean, he's like, he's like a watered-down version of Shishomaru. Because at least Shishomaru, when the push came to shove, he'd actually bring out some, like, for example, when he transformed into like, his demon fox mode. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> he was a whole different dude. So, thing, actually. So... Again, my thing here is that Jotaro's character theme is very familiar because we've seen it in other series a lot. And I guess in Japan that style of character is very popular, all right? I suppose so because we see it everywhere. So that being said, overall, I mean, because when you have a character that's very eccentric, that's very creative, that's very, you know, I mean, jo jo like Jotaro's creative, but he doesn't, like, react to his own creativity. Joseph in part two... When he did some cool shit, he let you know, I just pulled some cool shit, fucking look at me now. Well, I'm getting, uh, like, this dude will let you know, okay? But, when it comes to Jotaro, hands in pockets, yada yada, that's all he does. <sighs> no, so, I mean, to me, his character should have been expanded on greatly, but you know, it is what it is. So, that being said, I'm done. The chapter rating overall, I'm gonna give it a, um, whoa, the episode rating overall... I'm going to give it a rating. I thought it was solid. Okay, plus. Uh, not as good as the last episode. Cause, yo, the last episode. Yo, Muhammad and Jean-Pierre. I'm like, whoa, what? That was good. That was a good fight, man. That was a good fight. Mm. But this fight, not so bad. And, the, and everything, else is, everything else is pretty much the same. Animation-wise, pacing-wise. So overall, okay, plus rating of JoJo's Adventure. Stardust Crusaders, and I will see you guys later. King of Lightning, fuck censorship. Fuck it up the ass with a giant plunger. Peace. Have a nice day. A plunger used by several gay men. There we go.